let's see here. What did I do this Labor Day? Oh, I actually did get stuff done. I don't know. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only, a Hobo Tom. And if you were paying attention to my channel today, you realize that I have put on a lot of videos. Um, I put up my Labor Day video. That's up. That's from the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. Check that out. Also, or at least in the process, um, I worked on and completed my SmackDown trip to Jacksonville. So that's going to be a live video coming up probably another hour or so. Check that out too. Yeah, you might notice wearing the Star Spangled Cat. Because you know what, folks? It's Labor Day. I actually had off. I was enjoying my big thing of root beer, which for some reason I haven't finished yet. I already had the obligatory way too many hot dogs and onion rings. I'm about all set to take a nap. Oh, wait, I did take a nap. It was raw. Raw was a slog tonight. I don't care what you say. Well, before I do that, I do have two people to thank. Well, the Ghost of Roddy Piper, you're already in the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. Check out the Ghost of Roddy Piper. The Daytona Beach Bump Fight League 8 Pounds of Aluminum Tournament. Because he is there. It sounds really quiet for some... Oh, that's why. It's quiet. Yeah, that's better. That's just right. I like it when, when a plan comes together. Let's see here. Tony Storm sucks too. Someone made me read this, I think. You know what? You win twice because you get that six count. The Reverend Wells. You, sir, not only a reverend, but you know how to play the air guitar.
So before I go into what put me to nap, wow, that's that many notes. Wow, that's right. That did take up a lot of the show. Wait a second. Thirty. Wow, that was weird. I'll get to that, but first, my tribute to you, the American working people. Wait a second, I'm the American working person. This tribute's for me too. Enjoy this rendition of, of course, the Star Spangled Banner. forgot this um i did watch all out last night solid good show really good again my quibbles and there are very few of them but i think i have like three or four major quibbles with aew one their production levels meh. two everyone kicks out of finishers finishers should be sacred no one kicks out of the AJ Styles unless your name's John Cena. But even then, if you hit an Avalanche or an Avalanche Styles clash, you're not kink out, kicking out of that. Um, again, a few people can kick out of finishers, not basic scrubs. If your name's John Cena, you're allowed to kick out of anything regular, any Avalanche move you do not kick out of. That's two. Everyone kicks out of everything. Pyro is man. That probably goes more so into the first point of production. Production can be so-so. The women's division sucks. You gotta do a fight. Well, yeah. No, production and Pyro's one. Kicking out. The women's division sucks. We'll see what happens with the addition of Ruby Soho. If she does not win that belt, though, um, the women's division will still suck. And I guess my fourth point of contention, they are becoming very predictable. Because I have managed... Somehow, I watched, I predicted seven out of nine matches. I got the match of the night right. I got my stone cold lock right. I just didn't get my soon snap right. So that's okay. So I got an, And I got the bonus. And I predicted Ruby Silva would show up. So wow. So initially it was a seven out of nine. I got an extra point, point and a half for getting three of my extras right. So that bumped me up to an 8.5 out of 9 matches. That means I know what Triple H is thinking. Because Triple H probably wants to go over to AEW by now too. So I guess I have to talk about, Sm about Raw now. Good, so with all that being said... Let's talk about a very, you know what, I need a drink before, before I get into this. Let's talk about some raw. Well, after seeing a raw live and a SmackDown live, for some reason, oh, that's not good. For some reason, after seeing a raw live and a SmackDown live, Watching Raw, 
even on my computer, where I could still do stuff, force me to go over there to said couch and take a nap after eating, of course, all the hot dogs. So, with that being said, Raw starts off um, with RK Bro coming out, cutting a promo. Lashley comes out, so yeah, I want to be double champ. One day, I will have something about that there. Unfortunately, they're going to electronic tickets, which sucks. No more free souvenirs. Shame. Oh, yeah, that's right. I should because I have to go to work tomorrow. The labor force. Oh, oh there's a Pobo cat over there. I wonder if you'll see her. Oh, well, you might have been able to see her scratch at something. Because there's her hanging scratch pad, so. She attacks that versus my couches, which is a good thing for me. Um, wait, where was I? Yeah, uh, RK Bro comes out, cu cuts a promo, Bobby Lashley MVP, falls in us, says, yeah, I like the sound of, of two belts, that sounds pretty good. Then the New Day come out, because they're going to start the tag team turmoil. And wow, this was weird, because they broke it up into two parts. I don't know if that's good, I don't know if it's bad. I don't know if a tag team turmoil set up. It's good for TV, though. It just seems long. As always, um, I'll come back and revisit this and tell you what I think of it as a whole, but also do all the individual matches. So New Day starts off with the Viking Raiders, and this is the wrong choice to make. It should have been, honestly, New Day versus the Viking Raiders in the finals. That would have been good. But they had some other star power there. I don't like the way they're handling the Viking Raiders. I do miss the War Raiders. War. 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 Um, it was a good match, though. Uh, Kofi gets beat on by Ivar. Ivar hits a seed senton. <laughs> he gets used as a weapon by Eric. It's always fun to see another wrestler get used by his partner as a weapon. Eric turns, it's Eric turns to beat up, um, the New Day double team him. Kofi hits a trust fall. But yeah, both, they, he, he forgets. Viking Raiders are some pretty big beefy boys. So they catch him, throw him into Xavier Woods. Ivar like hops around the ropes, that's, I, I was shocked to see that. I can do that. Ivar does a splash, but only a two count. Then there was a trouble in Paradise on Eric and... New Day get a win? Can't complain about that match to start off. I don't like the order of it, though. I think they're kind of burying the Viking Raiders a little bit. Be careful. You might see the Viking Raiders as, as War Machine in AEW soon. But, you know what? It was a solid cheeseburger match. And then there was New Day. So, New Day... They stay, stay in the ring. It was um, Jinder Mahal and Veer. Uh, New Day just jumped Jinder Mahal, and, uh, Jinder Mahal and Veer. And Xavier has a big splash. Um, me, uh, Mahal and Veer do make a little bit of a comeback on the outside. Shanky, which sounds, sounds like a terrible Indian name for some reason. I don't know how he got that name. He, he must have drawn from the bottom of the bucket for that. But uh, they have a little bit of a comeback to, to a certain degree. Uh, they do hit, New Day hit, I don't know if it's the up, up, down, down, or the morning wood. It's a backbreaker stretch stomp combo. New Day wins. It's like, okay, they're getting a little worn down. This was still a good match, though. Junior Mahal's good. Veer's definitely coming along as a tag team wrestler. Shanky's a little shady, though. Still, overall, cheeseburger match. Nothing egregious. I can deal with it. And um, then it was a New Day versus the Lucia House Party. I'm like, uh-oh. This is where you're going to see the chinks in the armor, and the chinks in the armor did appear. I, I thought for a second that the Lucia House Party were going to win this match. The New Day did seem to get a little tired during this match. This is where things with them started to get a little boshy. Again, it's pro wrestling. Yes, people say it's choreographed. They know what they're doing. They're, they're big muscular men. Muscles still get fatigued, though. You're not going to be 100% after 
the two two quality, say a fifteen minute match and then a ten minute match, twenty five minutes. You're still gonna have fatigue. You're still gonna have lactic acid building up. Things are gonna get a little a little dicey. Uh, they started to in this match. Uh, Luch House Party. They they start off fast. Um, New Day tried to go right after them. That does not work though. Luch House Party is fresh on their feet. Again, he. Um, Lindsay Dorado stood on top of Grand Medley's shoulders and did a splash. I don't know. I don't know how you can stand on top of another human being's shoulders. Granted, it just looks like he fall down. He fell down. But still, you have to stand on not necessarily an even surface here, and you have to balance yourself. Granted, he's holding your feet, but still, the ropes. I know they're not stable, but. They're not human flesh. They're not. They're not wiggly like human flesh. Human flesh is very wiggly sometimes. Never trust that. Nor ladders. Ladders just have a mind of their own. Yeah, he did the um, shoulder on top of the shoulder splash. Uh, Lucia Hearts party. It looks they're trying to end it quickly. Then there were some weird botches. It just. Not so much that they weren't planned, but it looked a little bit like fatigue was coming in, especially once you get to the upper bodies. Remember, your upper body muscles are not meant to carry body weight. They're meant to do like little things. They're meant to lift things. They, they can lift big things every so often, but not that long and not for that often. The legs are meant to do that. If you have to start continually catching 200-pound objects, yeah, your upper body does tire out. Just look at the strongman competition. They go from the 100-pound boulder to the 150-pound boulder to the 200-pound boulder. And then they still have to go for the 250 and the 300-pound boulder. A lot of people by that 200-pound boulder, their arms, like, like they can walk with it. But just to pick it up and hold it like that, just it gives. Um, it's, it's flesh, folks, not steel. Yet, at least. Unless something in science fiction says otherwise. But yeah, um, there was some weird boshy stuff. Kofi, he did some ugly splash. That didn't look good. They just seemed to get tired a little quick. Um, Lucha House Party, the triple moonsault, really should have ended it. Then they had a super kick party! That was cool, and there was a weird roll-up at the end. Uh, New Day continue. Still overall, even with the botch, it was still a good match. It, it went kind of the way it should um, with, with all the spots and the way the Lucha House Party were. I actually thought they were going to win there for a moment. You know what? Okay, put a little down in my mind. Cheeseburger match. And then it went all the heck. Um, then it was New Day versus Mason T-Bar. Uh, Mason T-Bar, they just literally work over Xavier Woods. I'm like, ah, oh, that's it. <laughs> this is either going to be the roll up or this is going to be the end of it for New Day. And then Mason T Bar going to get squashed by whoever. But no, Mason you know, worked over Xavier Woods. New Day really are getting worked over at this point. Um, and there was that, that weird when, moment when Woods rolled up. Something Woods rolled up. Yeah, T-Bar. Yeah, that's right. That's, yeah, yeah. There's a weird roll-up. Weird roll-up by Xavier Woods onto T-Bar. This match was really quick. Um, T-Bar was upset. He beat up Woods. Um, beat up Xavier. Uh, beat up Kofi Kingston. This match overall, now you're getting to that, that, um, what's that phrase? Declining returns. Something like that. But yeah, this was a ham sandwich. The New Day still continue. Uh, Mansoor and Ali come in. Mansoor tries to, to help out the New Day. Yeah, that wasn't going to end well. Ali got sent to the post. And oh my goodness, can Ali sell. Mansoor got, got clubbed on the outside. Kofi, <laughs> Mace picked up the steps. T Bar picked up Kofi, and Kofi got Londard head first into the steps. And then they just said, "Time out, time. We have to stop. We have to stop this." 
So wait. No, I won't put on break because I'm still doing the same show. But yeah, normally it'd be a break. Honestly, I went to go get something. I think I went to re refill the drink that I'm still kind of finishing off now because it's a big old mug, delicious root beer with tequila. That I've had for Labor Day. So... Yeah, I came back and like, not oh, Drew McIntyre and Seamus. What happened to the show? Again, they, they stepped and said, yeah, they just had to put on pause. They had to let those teams recover. That makes sense, at least. So it's, it's not terribly egregious, I guess. Because, again, if, you're, if you do get lawn darted and you sold the way Ali did, that makes sense. Wow, look at that. Everything's done today. Oh, wow. Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus was, was a really good match. However, it's the diminishing returns. They keep on doing this over and over again. I know Drew McIntyre and Sheamus probably work great together, but they have to find some other partner for the dance eventually. Now, this match was power and power. Sheamus is very strike heavy. Drew McIntyre is a move thief. Stole the 10 beats. Um, stole the white noise from Sheamus. Sheamus hit a flying clothesline from the top rope all the way to the ground. That was good. Oh, the forearm minimum him right in the face. No, that's called a clothesline. Or you can say it was a flying lariat, but not enough. Yeah. This is forearm. This is clothesline. Or like this, it's, it's like this is the lariat. You know when you hit him with the point of the elbow like this? That's a lariat. Like this, that's a clothesline. It all depends. Larry to the elbow, clotheslines, kind of like your bicep, or or this part of the forearm. But generally, it's like this. Larry it tends to be like that. Or it used to be, back in the day. Now, it's interchangeable stuff. Boo, stupid ring announcers, and boo wrestlers for calling something their own thing. Boo. Um. Oh yeah, let's see here. Ooh, what was that? Yep, a flying clothesline. They trade blows on the top rope. Led to superplex. Superplex from the top rope for sure is amazing move to see. Sheamuson, again, they try to go. go uh, he got sent over the head. And then both of them go up to the top rope. And there's an overhead belly to belly suplex to Sheamus. That has some hype and some distance to it. That was pretty cool. It was a Celtic head headbutt. It's now Celtic headbutt has moved ahead of the Scottish held headbutt. Number one headbutt is still a Samoan headbutt. Number two headbutt is Irish. It's Celtic headbutt. Number three headbutt is Scottish headbutt. And four, you have the typical American headbutt. And the weakest weakest one. Ah, the weakest two are Canadian, and and then the the Australian headbutt are just pathetic. And then you have all the other nationalities headbutts somewhere there. Yeah, it's just not going to be Canadian or Australian. Then there was the the countdown to the bro kick. Again, it was great to see Sheamus kind of steal that. Uh, Drew then hit a Future Shock DDT. There was no Claymore, though. Uh, they do some EA boos. Sheamus got the roll-up victory with the tights. But however, this this even though Sheamus won, uh, Drew says, you know, I'm not done with you. He's upset because he pulled the tights. He then has a claim on Sheamus. So Drew still is the victor, but Sheamus wins. Sheamus is just the victor on his back. That's okay. I'll say what. This was good. This is what this show needed. They should have done this really at the beginning, though, because this is a good surf and turf match. Then there was a Damien Priest interview. He speaks Spanish and says, yeah, I just want to I just want to fight someone. Very typical stuff. Uh, there was a Rhea Ripley and the Nikki interview. I'm just over this. Um, Charles then does, does an interview. We'll get to that match later. Uh, Rhea, then the next match again was Rhea Ripley and Nikki Glencross. I refuse to... to 
her stupid gimmick was 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 fun and different at first. Now it's just old, and the fans are letting her know that you know what, we don't like this anymore. We don't like you. I hate to say it, Nikki Glenn Cross. I'm not beginning to like you. And it's all because of your, your poor choice and gimmicks. Sorry. But yeah, that's the way that a funny ball bounces. Um, they take on Natalia and Tamina. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, this is why I this is why I underlined it. Uh, Nikki just goes after Tamina. There's definitely a height and power difference there. Tamina just kind of swipes Nikki across. There was no monkey flip. Uh, Nikki does a standing senton. Nikki does get, get used a lot as a weapon in this match, which was kind of fun. And then whoever the second announcer was gave a power puff, power puff girl reference in Mojo Jojo. Whoa. I will give you some props. I remember back in the day when the power puff cartoon was actually a cartoon on Cartoon Network. And it was a cartoon network. It actually showed like cartoons. Good stuff. Back in the day. Um, so Nikki gets used to the weapon. I, I think Rhea Ripley and Nikki Cross win. So they get a title shot. I don't know. NXT rules. Um, Natalia just has to get pregnant somehow. Because she's not looking that good in the ring. Tamina's pretty good. No one is meaner than Tamina. I think tits got big, too. Dude, that, that outfit's amazing. But yeah, it is what it is. Rhea and Nikki won. Ham sandwich of a match. It was Moist TV. I had Karen Cross. And Karen Cross says, you know what? I'm just here. I just want to kick you in the head. And he's like, but I'm Johnny Drip Drip. Now, you should have said you're Johnny Mundo from Lucha Underground. Maybe that would have saved you the complete embarrassment that was your match. Well, actually, it wasn't. Uh, no, it was bad, actually. It was Karrion Cross versus uh, John Morrison. Um, Mundo, he started the Russian Tide. That was really cool. And that's the reason why. I think that's the one reason why I upgraded the match. Starts off going for a two on one Russian tie up. You're going to pull off collegiate moves like that and still do a little parkour. I'm good with that. I'll actually give you some credit. And then uh, he got Urnagi. He got the real Urnagi inside the ring. It's like um, a real Urnagi is almost like a belly to back suplex, except for it's more along the side. Like if you, like if you're in a headlock, you kind of have. It's more like your um, rib cage to the person's chest, and then you get tossed over that way. So it's, it's it's more like so. Here's like the one person. Here's here's you. It's, you kind of go that way. Yeah. Well, here we go. Better. So, so, so here's the one person standing. Yeah, see? And then here's the other person. Here. You kind of get stuck like this. I know you can't see. Well, you can't might see it. Or it's more perpendicular. And then you're just tossed. Yeah, that's probably a terrible diagram. But yeah, that's what it looks like more so in the Saito, Saito Exploder Suplex. Saito Suplex. Irinagi is the same thing. And Irinagi... What they call an Urnagi in pro wrestling is more like a, like the rock bottom, or like a sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, more like a yeah, more like the rock bottom. Urnagi is more like a suplex. A little point of te technicality there. But yeah, then, then he went up to the top rope and got earned. Then he got Urnagi literally over the ring post to the outside. That's gonna earn you bonus points too. And that's. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's probably why I like that match. Because I'm like, holy crap. You just got tossed over the ring post in a legit judo throw. Cross is vicious. Uh, eventually, it's the cross jacket was applied. John Morrison at least passes out. That was good to see. Um, carrying cross wins. I'll tell you what. It was mainly because of just of everything that was going on. I'll give it a ham sandwich of a match. I'm not giving any total squash match a cheeseburger unless it's something utterly amazing. But this was not utterly... There we go. I'm going to bring up the break. I just had a refill. So good as root beer. 
on Labor Day. Ah, oh, good stuff. Put some hair on your chest. Oh, you don't want to see hairs on my chest. A lot of hairs on my chest. Too much root beer in the tequila. That'll do it. But, oh yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, oh god. Oh. I don't even know where to start. It was Nia Jax taking on Charlotte Flair. Part two. How do I? Can I? Um, I'll tell you what. It would have been more interesting if they just had a shoot fight in the ring. The referee should have said, you two ladies have issues. I'll step back. I'm here to count the three or to, to wave off the person if you get knocked out. Uh, Vince, just have out with it. I don't want to be a part of this. Um, I was hoping for a shoot again the way it was. It was worse. And it started off awful. And then it, it stayed awful. And it wasn't even to that point where, oh, this is at least entertaining. This is just awful. I was like, so you want to grab my hair? Yeah, yeah, you want to grab my hair? Yeah, you want to grab my hair? Like, Charlotte, just leave. But, oh, shoot, I forgot to do that. I'll just do this at the end of the show, that's all. You know, I'm forgetting something. That's okay. I can always cut and paste stuff. Um, put the end at the beginning and the beginning at the end. But, yeah, um, this was just not good. Uh, a lot of hair pulling, cat fight going on, um, Nia Jax looked like she was going to do something from the top rope, Charlotte slid underneath and was going to do a power bomb, except for it looked like Nia Jax just fell on her ass. Um, I can't tell if Charlotte's checked out and just doing stuff. I can't even tell who's going into the business for themselves. This was just bad. Shayna thankfully got involved a little bit, teased, um, punching Nia Jax, and no, 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 see, I didn't, I didn't throw at you this time. Then they went back up. Charlotte hit, hit a uh, top rope natural selection on Nia Jax, and after Shayna distracted her, this wasn't good. At least last time, it was entertaining. This wasn't entertaining. Woo! Not the good woo. But woo, I'm glad this is over. Because this was a piece of toast. Then Alexa Bliss showed up. Alexa Bliss is back. I guess from doing whatever. Who knows whatever what whatever was. Or doing who whatever was. Because um, I think she is recently married or engaged or something like that. There's someone, some loser in a band. We'll see how long that lasts. Hey Alexa. When you're ready for a real man. Hobo Tom's always here. Oh, which is, which is going to lead to a funny story. A friend of mine actually on, on her Facebook page said that Marco Stunt was trying to hit on her. Good for her. Trust me. Get all that wrestling cash you can. Get tours. Get wine. Woo! Dine. Woo! You should become a high styling, profiling, woo! Jet setting. Son of a lady. Yeah, that's right. Because there's no female version of a gun. Woo! But yeah. Kudos to you. And I'm just laughing. Mainly at the fact that she's like six foot. 
And Marco stuns 4 9. Sometimes you just have to sit back and laugh. Yeah, then Alexa Bliss showed up. Uh, has the power of teleportation. Challenges Charlotte Flair. Well, she'll get the belt and Charlotte Flair will no longer be here. That's all. Uh, Reginald then, we've seen the promos of Reginald in the most, in the unsafest parks in America. And then the match was Reginald versus Sazawa. I'll say what, this is terrible, because I swear, I like, did something, I had to like throw out something or I pet my cat, and the match was over. Um, he did something, beat Sazawa, one, two, three, the whole loser locker room came out. So sad to see those people in the loser locker room. They went right after him. He just, like, jumped over him. Drake Maverick was there. Sidestep Drake Maverick. Uh, our truth remembers Drake Maverick. Again, from the original 24-7 loser locker room. This match was a piece of toast. And I don't think I've ever done that. I don't ever think I've ever had to give out two toasts on any program. Raw's really hit a low. That's terrible because they have so much talent. They just wasted Charlotte Flair, Nia Jax. Um, then two drop. Shooting truce about Eva Marie. Sounds about right. And then we get back. And then literally we have the reset. Uh, so now it was, eight, it was uh, New Day versus Ali and uh, Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. Uh, it just seems slower. Um, Kofi hit the SOS, but no penitent. Kofi a flying cross body. But then that got countered by some super kicks. Uh, he had trouble in paradise. Uh, Mansoor uh, Ali went for his 054. Which could have been, or, or, yeah, 05. 045. It's the 5, yeah, reverse 5, yeah, the reverse 540. 054. 045. Whatever. Uh, missed that. Um, Kofi had the trouble in Paradise. And then the flying elbow by Xavier Woods, like, barely hit. So that was the end of that match, thankfully. It was still pretty good, though, and exciting. Again, Ali can fly and Mansoor can do good stuff. The New Day is the New Day. You know what? It was in a ham sandwich of a match, though. So then we had then uh, the New Day taking on AJ and Omos. Oh, this was good. AJ Styles goes in there. He just tackles. Um, Kofi came to try to do something sloppily. Yeah, AJ Styles... He turned that spear into a tackle and just throws kidney punches uh, again to the back of Xavier Woods because Xavier Woods is the one selling the back. Omos just steps on the back of Xavier Woods, Andre the Giant style. Uh, that was so good. New, New, New Day is definitely beat up. They're worn out. Things got botchy. There was a terrible uh, trouble in paradise. But then Omos, he just the stomp. And then there was a setup. For the prettiest move, the Styles Clash. Oh, that looks so good. The Styles Clash won a match. A movie I haven't seen in a while. Just because of that, I got excited. It's a cheeseburger match. Of course, with the Styles Clash, you know AJ Styles won. And Omos. Uh, then it was time for the finals. But yeah, um, it was Bobby Lashley and MVP taking on AJ Styles and Omos. Um, Omos and Bobby Lashley, they go into the test of strength. The Greco-Roman oh, test of strength to see who was the stronger man. And the stronger man is Omos. Because Bobby Lashley had to kick his way out of that predicament. Um, Bobby Lashley he tried to go for a suplex, but no. Bobby Lashley's not that strong. Omos kind of reverse suplex Bobby Lashley. That was good though. It might have been a botch, but still. 
at least he sold it well, and it was done well. Picked him up, held him up there, realized he was faltering. He was like, ah, I'm not going to do anything stupid. He realized he, he, he didn't know what to do and just said, you know what? By the said, 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 just drop, face first, drop. F- front, front bump. That was, that still looked good, though. If that wasn't called for, that was great, though. Um, <laughs> then Bobby Lashley got booted over the top rope. That was great. Um, that was, whoa. Then, of course, they, they, uh, Bobby Lashley has to stare down a little bit with... Uh, Randy Orton, Omos gets kind of involved, distracts them. AJ Styles comes running over, or MVP's there, starts drawing at Omos. AJ Styles, from like literally out of nowhere, runs across the table. Big splash, takes out both MVP and Bobby Lashley. That was fun. Um, Omos then tosses, literally tosses Riddle into the barricade. That's out of the table. He tosses Matt Riddle around like it's nothing. I'm sure Riddle's cooperating, but still, these Riddle's making Omos look like a beast, and it's so good that way. Eventually, in the in the back of the ring, AJ Styles eats kind of a surprise spear. AJ Styles eats the pin. I could live with that. Um, Omos is upset. Lashley poses. Omos then slammed Bobby Lashley. Uh, Omos goes out to help his buddy AJ. Lashley still in the wing, ring wobbly. Lashley eats an RKO. You know what? Because of the RKO, the most devastating move. This is a cheeseburger match. And the crowd gets to go home happy. They saw an RKO, and they probably saw Randy Orton wrestling his RK match, too. So that's always good to see. Um... Overall, though, I'll tell you what. This was maybe a ham sandwich raw at best. So with this week, I'm going to be doing a lot more live stuff because I work early or not at all. And the only day I work late is Saturday. So I'm good to go live for the rest of the week because everything else is a two-hour show. I may or may not cover red page. I don't know. It all depends what SmackDown's like. But again, do check out the videos I've posted. I think I've put up, this will be my third one. I'll probably put up tomorrow morning ish. So it'll be here close enough. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you're going to hit the root beer tonight or anything a little bit stiffer. Please remember that the vast majority of us still have to go to work tomorrow.